One of the great things about electrifying vehicles is that it gives you the opportunity to redesign them from the bottom up. In the case of motorbikes, it gives you the opportunity to simplify things because that's what you want, to purify the connection between the rider, the power source and the wheel. With the arrival of Verge, there's an opportunity to redesign the system. So, have Verge reinvented the wheel? In an engineering world, the ultimate goal is minimal losses, minimal parts, pure just power. And now we have nothing in between us and the road. Basically, we're a team of engineers that um, got together and we saw the current change in motorcycling going towards electric and we thought, you know, we could do that, we could build something new, something fresh and that's where the dream of building our first bike, the TS, came from. In a traditional sort of sense, you've got the fuel right on top, which can, you know, really change the, the DNA of a motorcycle. But what we've been able to do is because we've started from the ground up, we've been able to put all the heavy components really low in the bike, which you know, makes it a, an absolute dream to handle. So moving on then to the most distinct thing about the TS, which is the rear wheel. Mm -hmm. So how it works is basically just magnets. It's, put, it's an electromagnet motor, and we've built it in our own custom way. So yeah, it looks cool, but it's also very functional. Like each way, each thing we've designed is for a purpose. We haven't just designed it to make it look cool. So, you know, it, it has a hole so that we can enhance cooling and also we can take away a bulk of weight from the middle, which you'll see in traditional hub motors. So there are aspects of it that are so many benefit, benefits, such as we don't need a chain anymore. That's another component you don't need. You don't need a sprocket anymore. You don't need all of these components that are gonna perish. Yeah. So now you just have one moving part and as a team of engineers, that's the ultimate goal. The, the sort of, idea as an essence was the market isn't really innovating and doing things in line with what electric can provide. Because the effect of the motor, the, the, the power that makes the bike go forward is contained within, inside the tyre basically, yep. and into that, in, in, the, in a ring. Because you, you, you've got a loss, if, if you've got the interest of a chain, every link in the chain is going to reduce efficiency. Correct. Which is why you can get, is it a thousand? Newton meters. Newton meters of torque. Yep, at, at the wheel, which is yep. where the power of our bike is, it is 1,000 Newton meters. Of course, if you go into the complexity of having a gearbox and sprockets and chain lengths and yep. things, then there is some comparison, but like ultimately, we do have 1,000 meters, Newton meters at the wheel. It's about 700 and something brake horsepower. 745 foot-pounds of torque? There or thereabouts? Yeah, that's quite a bit. So a few stats then on the Verse TS. The exciting ones you want to know about, the top speed is 115 miles an hour. And that's created by a thousand Newton meters of torque from the back end. As far as the endurance of it goes, well, the 20 kilowatt hour battery will give you about 300 uh, kilometers, 180 miles uh, on sort of normal urban setting, which translates to about 200 kilometers or 120 miles out on the open highways and motorways. Charge times vary, as with all electric vehicles, depending on how you charge it. The charge point is just here, and you can charge it from a standard 3.5 kilowatt charger, and that'll take about maybe four and a half hours to, to charge up to full. However, it has got the option, which I love, to charge DC, the old rapid charging, which is unusual at the moment on electric motorbikes, and that'll charge in about 40 minutes, which is brilliant. To the back. It may look like a hubless wheel, and that in itself would be quite cool. But what it actually is, is the entire bike. So in here is the motor, it's the drivetrain, it's everything. So this 
basically what looks like a big thick wheel room is effectively it's your engine it's your gearbox it's the chain and sprockets at the back it's all contained in there which leaves the front part of the bike just for the battery which means not only can you take a big battery giving that a decent range but also that weight is down low which makes the bike a lot more stable a lot less to ride If you came to Fully Charged Live in the UK, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did or didn't, take a look at Fully Charged Live in Europe in Amsterdam on the 20th to the 22nd of May. Check the description below for links and uh, hopefully I'll see you there. So the technology behind the hubless wheel aside, Verge's ambition was to design a motorbike that would work for the urban environment and out on the open road. And I think they've achieved it. Not only have you got various ride modes, but even the addition of the front pegs means you can tr transition from weaving through the city streets to riding through a quaint little village to cruising on the open countryside. And best of all, whether it's five o'clock in the morning in the city, at midday in the village, or any time in the wilds, you can do it quietly. The bike's very stable because uh, the entire sort of power and drive train is inside that rear wheel. All that's up front between my legs is the battery, so that weight's down low, making it nice and stable and nice and smooth. In my opinion, I've seen some concepts, but nothing actually that I could have sat and ridden. So the TS is the first hubless motorcycle that's come to market. It's the first hubless integrated motor, yes. There's been iterations that have used chain and sprocket. You see it a lot in the custom motorcycle world where they kind of go for that futuristic look, but no one's actually integrated the motor into a hubless design. So could you put a wheel stroke motor, stroke drivetrain, which is all one wheel, on a combustion engine bike? Uh, no, because having an electric bike, you don't need the chains, you don't need the sprockets, you don't need the gearboxes anymore. All of those things are connected in a, in a traditional petrol bike. Whereas having an electric bike, you're allowed to change the dimensions and change the things which allow us to create what we've created. And what have you found that people's reactions have been to to the, the bike as a whole, including obviously that rear wheel. So the way it looks is obviously very striking. It's very futuristic. People compare it to, you know, your Tron, Tr Tron is, Akira, yeah. Yeah. even Judge Dredd. Um, but more of the electric side of things, um, there is kind of a, a stark difference because you don't get the vibration, you don't get the noise, you don't get that oily smell if you have certain brands of motorcycles. Um, but it's a whole new experience that some people they have difficulty understanding it until they've experienced it. Yeah. And then when they have experienced it and the smiles have come out, you feel the talk, you intera interact with your surroundings a lot more, a lot more clearer because you don't have those feelings. It's a, it's a brand new experience, but it's, it's so good. The Verge TS has got a variety of modes from eco up to uh, more sporty modes and customs. I'm just going to flick through them here, you can flick through the modes and then change up to what you want. I've pre uh, put, put in a custom mode actually, so it basically can change how much power you get, how much of that torque you actually get when you whack on the throttle, uh, but also uh, how much regen braking you get. And I've whacked that to 100% because I like my uh, maximum regen braking, but also to make use of what is effectively the equivalent of engine braking on a, on a combustion engine motorbike. So filming today has been difficult at times because so many people have been coming up and asking us about the motorbike because even the, uh, the people who's, who don't realise it's an electric water bike have come up to ask about that, that rear wheel. A, 
And with that, with the, with the kind of unusual nature of that rear wheel, because again, from somebody who's not an engineer, you look at it and you go, it looks, it looks a bit delicate. Like, what's a hold? Because normally you used to see in spokes that yeah. hold the wheel together. You know, how, how, what are people's reactions? Yeah, well, first of all, it's got a hole in it. You know, that's yeah. totally counterintuitive. You know, we were thinking, well, how can it sort of, you know, exist? And especially when you don't see a chain showing you where the movement point is. So we've got a very intricate bearing system, which holds the uh, wheel together, basically. And um, that is it's very simple, but it is intricate and it's very robust as well. Um, water can't get into the motor, into the you know, real part that matters. It's impermeable, um, only in a service point. Water's not gonna be a problem, mud's not gonna be a problem. It's extremely robust and the serviceability side of things is, it's blown my mind how we've developed it. Literally, you can change the wheel in less than five minutes. What a lot of companies have done is they've taken the old combustion engine bikes and effectively they've just turned them into electric bikes. What Verge have done is actually start from the bottom with a clean slate and gone, right, if we design it electric, what would that look like? And it's little things as well. It's little things like the pegs at the front, because why not do that? Why not change your position? Because you no longer need a rear brake on this side and a clutch lever on this side, a gear lever on this side. So you can have as many pegs to change your feet as many times as you want on a ride. And then from a much bigger point of view is the rear wheel, because the entire bike is now contained in there. That's where your power comes from. That wheel is the bike. So Verge haven't reinvented the wheel by any means. What they have done is they've repurposed it for an electric age. If you've enjoyed this, please click on the like and uh, please subscribe. Take a look at the links below for our Patreon and our YouTube membership pages. And apart from that, as always, if you have been, thanks for watching. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Please leave a comment down below in the comment section. Give us a like, that's always nice. We love getting a like. And also, if you're really interested in this topic, that video is one we did a while ago, very relevant to the topic. This is our latest episode up there. You can subscribe to Fully Charged, and up there, you can have a look at our Patreon page.